can go mess. So, um, we didn't expect for this day to be post-release. Yeah, um, that was a nice. It's a nice surprise. It was an enjoyable ride. Um, I was thinking about this song today, and like, I wrote a little bit about this in the um, article your mom read. <laughs> <laughs> His mom said, I read the article that you and your friend did. Uh, mom, it was Instagram a song. Yeah, oh, it was an Instagram song. post. Yeah, okay. um, <laughs> that there's like, I don't, there was no impression in my mind that a song like this changes anyone's mind, but uh, it is certainly a good way to express lament. Yeah. Um, and I enjoyed it and have loved listening to it. So here's free. Free. Cheers. Saw my brother down on his knees Forced to give his own eulogy As I was measuring the distance between The world we've been given and the world that will leave How come most of us that ignore this process and that's how I mean a lot of musicians probably have like voice memos of songs yeah but I think that sounds not like there's nothing not from that original one other than like there's a minor chord and yep. then a minor chord and then a major which, chord which a lot of songs have yeah. <laughs> we're not free until we're all free we're not free until we're all So there's this like interesting dynamic there between call like calling each other yeah, brother, brother. Yeah. which was that on purpose? Yes. Um, so definitely listen to your verse before I officially wrote my verse. But um, when I heard you say brother, there tends to be this um, this language that's used when a white person decides to talk to a person of color or a person who a group that is normally oppressed and mm -hmm. it's like well how can i make you feel like we love you you're my friend we're like family i you know we, yeah. i really care for you so we brother you well I, f I find myself do are, doing that more yeah. like when talking about issues of race i say like brother or sister mm -hmm. like i say mm -hmm. like i don't normally say like um like bro like and my white brother, like, I don't, right. I never find myself saying that, but I do say, like, and our brothers and sisters of color, like, it is, so that's, it's interesting that you did that, because that made me realize a little bit, like, oh, this is, this language that we yeah. use can be, like, mm -hmm. a little bit, like, if you flip it on its head, it's like, ooh, that's Yeah, like, so it was, it allowed me to use that play, but in a completely different sense yeah. of what brother looks like when someone uses it towards us so like let me lose use it back of you're my brother right but you're my brother in regards to what brother means for you to me mm -hmm. um and how you use that term i've been in so many sermons as um a participant a congregant and it's like friends yeah and i'm like oh, get that out of here <laughs> <laughs> friends we're not friends <laughs> <laughs> We don't do life together. Um, you're in a position of power. I'm not. Um, so, um, but yeah, it was it was it was definitely an opportunity to use that word 
um, and it means two completely different things where um, I would say, and you could disagree, um, when you use brother, it's like, no, like, I see this person and this is my brother and he experiences something that I will never experience, yeah. but we are still brothers where it's like, but for me it was like, brother, but you're a brother of privilege. Yeah. You're a brother, brother who is able to oppress. You're a brother who is able to kill. Um, you can still call me your brother. Yeah. You can still say we're brothers, but it's a term that you use to make yourself feel better. It's a term that you use. Brother, pack my bag and carry me on a voyage across that wayward sea. in there the, the next morning and I said I can play this part and we cut everything I played other than the non-playing <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was a it was a struggle to find the right part when we were recording because um, it being a, in the middle of a pandemic we didn't have a ton of time to like mm -hmm. write all the parts and prepare it all together so we were doing it all um, on our own in our own separate corners but also only practicing it a few times uh which and th i mean that was kind of a weird thing but also a beautiful thing like to be able to hear it now f in its finished form like we've only played the song live once um it, yeah it was really cool to, to listen to it right now to hear it because uh, i never heard robert's part before um yeah i wasn't there when i wasn't in the room when he was recording it and i think w when we were practicing it he was still working on the lyrics so um Yes, it's really cool that like I had like a you know small contribution to it, but then to see the finished version is, or to, to hear that is um, powerful.
that, that line that you wrote emphasized the chorus maybe more than anything else was just like, um, from the white perspective was like, I see a member of the human race being oppressed. And your line was, I see a member of the human race oppressing. Mm -hmm. And like sort of the reiteration of like, the person who is oppressing and the mm -hmm. person oppressed are both, mm -hmm. you know, enslaved by a very mm -hmm. different thing, but they're both enslaved. Yep. Um, and so like that sort of like drills home that point, which I thought was, was cool in the ways that our verses play off mm -hmm. one another. Yeah, well, because for your line, I took, I saw it as um, the brother on the knee was, if anything, me, but dead. Yeah. Uh, but it's this ironic, this ironic situation where we at times put so much on groups that are oppressed mm -hmm. that it's like, okay, well, build our country, yeah. do it for free, mm -hmm. and then figure out your life later on, right? Yeah. So it's like, oh yeah, we, c I just murdered you. But you've got to create your own eulogy, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you now have to speak well of yourself because we're going to destroy your character. Yeah. You're still going to be known as the guy who was had a fake twenty dollar bill, um, or you randomly worked at this club that no one really cared about, yeah. and you still weren't seen as a great person in the community. Um, so you can't be a martyr, but um, so we're going to create this image of you. But you still, as a person who is dead, still have to now come out and say, but I still was a good person. I still did not deserve to die yeah. for whatever thing I was involved in at the moment. Yeah. Like, I still deserved justice. So for me, that's what I took your line as. Yeah. Of, like, I now see this, I now see my brother yeah. who is dead, but still has to get on his knees and give mm -hmm. his own eulogy mm -hmm. and now speak for himself, you know? So the battle's really never over yeah. when it comes to the um the ideology and the image of um the the black person or the person the, the suppressed groups of now that you have gone to glory or whatever your mm -hmm. afterlife may be um you still have to now find a space and a way to speak well of yourself mm -hmm. because that's what the eulogy is used for yeah you know an opportunity to say this is what was good about such and such and yeah. such and such and this is how they left this earth and this is how they will go on you mm -hmm. know so that's how i saw your line yeah and i think yeah for me it was like when these situations of like brutality happen like the 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 actual like funeral can can be like a like very different than mm -hmm. if somebody dies of you know cancer or mm -hmm. something else where is a very public thing and there's sort of this like exclamation point mm -hmm. at the end of a life that becomes that person's story mm -hmm. which is such a strange reality of like uh, someone could live their entire life pursuing one thing and then something could happen to them mm -hmm. that becomes what they are forever you know you know, put into the his, you know, whatever history books or like yeah. into the canons of society is like this thing that happened to them and it's the way they died. Yeah. Um, and so this like surreal like, uh, you, you know, you sort of like in that split second get to say the one thing mm -hmm. that you're remembered for yeah. Um, is yeah was was part of that line of like. What do you say in that moment? Yeah. Thing from that that like stayed on the record. Probably not. I mean, there's five minutes or so. I got rid of it. There, yeah, there's five minutes there, so there might be something yeah. in there. I might or, have said the word free once. Probably, yeah. So. Did you, Robert? Did you sing anything on that? No, or you on just that one. you were just sitting I there as I. Sitting, we were all sitting <laughs> listening to you. Just, just me, just there. mumbled. I don't know where this is going. And I'm like, oh, he's already wrote lyrics. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I, a, I made a significant contribution to the chorus chord progression that I think is in there. Oh, and that stuck for the real thing. See Was if it? I can confirm that. <laughs> You're in there, yeah.
Does it go into something that sounds like the song? Anyways, yeah. as we were saying, I think Jack was totally making that up on the spot. <laughs> And then it progressed from that to where it is today. Yeah. There you go. <laughs>